In the previous lecture, we got an access token by invoking the endpoint URL openid-connect-slash-token against our key clock server. So let me try to get the access token one more time because my previous access token might have expired. So as you can see, in the body, we have to make sure we are passing the client ID, client secret, scope, and grant type. So once we have these details populated and invoke this API, with the post method, you should get an access token. So I got a new access token here. I'll take this access token. And here, first I'll try to invoke this my account API without passing any access token. You can see I'm getting 401 unauthorized. So now in order to pass this access token to my resource server API, I need to mention an header with the name authorization and the value will be bearer space followed by the access token that you got from the key clock server so with this now if i try to invoke you can see right now i have 401 but post this i'm getting 403 forbidden error which means i'm authenticated but i'm not authorized to invoke this this is because we have configured in order to invoke my account api the client application or the user should have a role of user. Since I have not created any roles and assigned to the client that I have created on the key clock, it is throwing forbidden error. But let's try to invoke my loans because for this only the user should be authenticated and there is no roles restrictions. So if I try to invoke my loans and in the body also you should make sure we are passing the email and what is the email that we have present in the database. As you can see here, I'm getting a 200 response, which means I pass the access token that I got from the key clock server to my resource server when I'm invoking a secure REST API. My resource server went and validated the access token that is provided by me. And once it decides it is a valid access token and I have enough authorization to invoke that particular API, it is giving a proper response to me. So now my loans is working because there is no roles mapping is needed for that. But if I invoke with the same access token, my account, as we saw previously, we are getting 403 error. So how to resolve this? For the same, we can go to key clock admin console. Here we have a roles tab, click on that. And by default, we have some predefined roles created. So I'm trying to create a new role and the role name is user. I'm clicking save. Similarly, I will also create one more role, which is admin. So once I have created these two roles, you can verify that the role names are appearing here. So I have to map these roles to my client ID that I have created. So for the same, I just have to go to clients and here, the client is EasyBank API. Once you click on the client EasyBank API, there is a roles tab. Here, you just have to click on the service account roles because this is not an individual user. This is an service account which we are trying to use inside client credentials grant type. So I'll click on this service account roles. So here we have two available roles. I'm adding both of them to the client ID EasyBank API. So now my client EasyBank API has role access of admin and user. So if I try to get a fresh access token and invoke my account API, it should work without any issues. So let me try to get the access token again by invoking the same API slash token. So this time I got a different access token. I'm taking that. I'll go to the My Account API Invocation tab here under header. I need to replace the access token with the latest one. Once I replace the latest access token, if I try to invoke, I should get a proper response with the 200 status. So you can see I got a successful response. So this way we can create client credentials client IDs, roles, and assign between them. And this is the scenario where one microservice or one service is trying to invoke other service. So due to that reason, we have used 
client credentials grant type where there is no individual user involved. We can also check the what is present inside this access token by going to the jwt.io. So I'm just pasting the access token that we received. So you can see these are all the details payload that my key clock server responded. My roles are present inside realm access inside that all my roles are present under roles key. If you can recall, we wrote a key clock role converter here. First, we are looking for the key realm access, which is matching to this. Once I got a value for realm app access, I will look again for the key roles. So that we are doing here. Once we got the key value of roles, I'm making sure the role name is being changed to role underscore role name and this, all those roles I'm putting inside grant authority and I'm passing all those authorities to my spring security framework. So this way I wrote a custom converter which will make sure to do that conversion so that my roles are being passed to my spring security framework the way it is expecting. But if you don't want to do that, instead of any role, you can use has any authority or has authority because inside authority we learned there is no prefix of role will be added by Spring Security Framework against the roles that we have configured. But with this simple role converter, we should be good even if you are trying to use the role based access mechanism. And you can see these are the scopes supported by my key clock server right now. So open ID will give access token and ID token and email will give email details and email will give email details of the user or the client if there are any present inside key clock auth server and address will give address details and profile will give profile details. We can also see whenever we are trying to get an access token by invoking the API slash token, we are also getting a dedicated separate ID token. So we can go and check what is present inside this ID token by pasting that here in the jwt.io. And this ID token contains entirely the details about the individual user or client application who are trying to perform authentication and authorization. So the ID is Easy Bank API here. And there is no address, that's why it is empty. And it will also have other details like at what time the token is issued, what is the expiration time. So any details that you want to know specific to the user or identity of the client application, you can always leverage the ID token. So this way OpenID framework also add ID token on top of access token. With this, we have a clear understanding on how to create a client on key clock server so that we can use that inside client credentials grant type. Once that is created, we saw how to get an access token by invoking an API against key clock server. Post that, we also configured a resource server and established a link between resource server and key clock server by mentioning a property inside application.properties. Once that is done, we also saw how to take an access token from the key clock server and pass that access token to the resource server to get the proper authenticated response from it. So this way we covered the first scenario like getting the response from the resource server using Postman API invocation and the same approach can be used for any API to API interaction or service to service interaction. In the next lecture, let's try to understand how to implement OR2 framework in the scenarios where we have a web application to interact with an resource server. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.